Hi folks, and today we are going to find out which sequencer, software sequencer, is the grooviest of them all. Now I'm not talking about hardware sequencers, different ball game, but kind of the same ball game as well, but we're not talking about them. We're just talking about software sequencers. Basically your DAW. Now there are some trackers out there, but I have no experience with them, so I'm not talking about them. So it's which sequencer, DAW, swings the most. When you know, I'm talking about the groove here, I'm really talking about swing. They, they can all swing, they all allow you, as far as I know, they all uh, allow you to swing. And how good is it? How bad is it? We're not really going to be talking about that because I'd have to go through every single sequencer. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to reveal to you, I'd give some reasons why I think it might be the best uh, sequencer for swinging up your tracks a bit, right? And the winner is... Machine! Surprised? Yeah, well, I'm not. But um, that's because I know, right? And I've been using Machine on and off for seven years. But about six months ago, I started writing songs for uh, to release later on this year. And... Um, I used Ableton, Cubase, but there was one track in particular I needed a kind of feel. I, I, it was just a basic swing feel. And I went again, like I had done for the millionth time, well, I'll try the uh, MPC or the Logic uh, grooves. I tried lots of them. And I, I'll, I'll settle on one, like MPC 55%. But within half an hour, I'm like, nah, that, that doesn't that doesn't work, you know? Um, and... It's kind of the same with Cubase, although getting the groove that I want, the swing groove that I want from Cubase is much better and easier than it is in Ableton Live. With Ableton Live, for me to inject swing into the proceedings, I bypass their templates, their, their groove swing quantized templates, because I think they're all rubbish. I don't know why they don't work. It just feels, sounds awkward, all of them. And... Um, I end up, you can do this with any DAW, uh, moving notes around myself, right? I, t I turn the grid off and I'll move stuff back and forth a little bit. And I can inject swing there, but sometimes I just want a basic swing and I'm like, I was using Ableton Live that day and I'm thinking, why am I having to do this to get a bit of swing action? And I remembered that I knew that Machine does this really well, so I loaded up Machine, I got the drums and the bass within five minutes with the, the perfect swing that I was looking for. And uh, so since then, I've been using Machine when I'm starting a track to use it to get the drums and the bass line, at least that amount, sorted before I, I go into Cubase or Ableton Live. I'll bring the Machine VST plugin in there, load up what I, I did, and blah, 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 start committing stuff to audio. Works fine. But anyway, right, let's, let's focus on what we're talking about here. So what I've done here... Oh, by the way, I, I suppose I quickly have to mention what machine is. It's basically a big fancy drum machine. It can load up VSTs, do all that stuff. You can even arrange tracks on it. Um, but fundamentally, what it is, each group, I've got two groups here. They're actually just exactly the same. One's got the quantized, one doesn't, um, which you'll hear in a minute. Uh, but each group has 16 slots where you can put any type of sound in there. Obviously, drums, it's going to be the number one choice that people are going to think about but there are basically 16 polyphonic samplers the these 16 slots right and um you can have multiple groups so if you have 10 groups i would never have that i only ever use one but you could have 10 groups you could have just your drums your your bass stuff your synth stuff all, all in their own their own separate groups if you want right uh, but this is not like a how to work machine. There's there's other videos for that. This is specifically talking about it, it, its ability to swing. This amplify group here. They're both exactly the same content, but one's got the swing and one doesn't. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a quick listen to the one without the swing. I mean, I'm not offended by that. That's just straight, hard, quantized 16. One sixteenth. 
Um, I'm from the 80s, so I'm very used to grew up with hard quantized 1 16th, for the most part. Um, I don't think uh, Blue Order, uh, Blue Order? Yeah, New Order's, uh, Blue Order, yeah. Uh, New Order's Blue Monday has swing quantize on the go. But anyway, um, let's have another listen to that. No, no swing. <laughs> Okay, and here's the one with the swing. Standard, right? The standard, the standard swing. So I'll just go back and forth between the two. It's not particularly elegant, I don't have the controller set up. So we'll start with the, the swung and then we'll go to the unswung. So, you, you can clearly hear the difference. Um, I haven't gone mental with the swing. And like I said earlier, it's, it, that's fine for me, right? That amount of swing. That's precisely what I wanted for the, the basis of this, this uh, loop here. We'll have a look at what, how they've implemented this. Now, it's so simple in its implementation, but there's an element of genius with it somebody there, thank you, whoever it was. I can imagine at the meetings or the, the first development stages, they went, the, look at the group section here. A group is like 16 sounds, right? So they've put a groove and then you, you see the parameter there, you got swing there, right? On the group. I must be affecting the wrong one what's going on hang on yeah that's it take that back to I think it was 24% right so obviously I'm, I've added swing on the group so that's going to affect every one of these sounds but but on each sound, you get the same parameter. So you can swing every single individual sound, degrees or percentages, so you don't have to have an all-in-one all encompassing uh, swing, right? And what that means is it's very musical, kind of subtle, but very musical. And as you can see here, I've got the hi-hats, these hats here. And I settled on 24%, so I'll just put it back there. And that really helps this groove. Didn't put any on the hi-hat, the open hat, because there are, they, they won't swing. If I put a few more notes in there, here and there, it would. Uh, on the percussion, uh, basically I've put different swing settings on, the, not, not because I just wanted it to be different, it's because it just felt better doing that, you know? A bit more, a bit less on the bass line, but I thought I would, uh, you know, I've only got 9%, but it's enough to make the bass line swing. Let's actually uh, put more on. It works, right? Even at 31%. They implemented this at Native Instruments in such a musical manner, a musical feel, how, 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 it, how it turns out, right? And um, with that bass line, we could anywhere right up to, well, let's just check it out. Even, even that's acceptable. It's a bit much for me, but I could definitely see that some people would appreciate that. 
And the beauty is, like I say, I'm doing this individually on the bass. It's not affecting anything else. So if I went to the group, and this would be the standard fodder that you'll get in uh, sequencers, just a, a one swing fits all, you know? Um, and that means that bass line wouldn't have that heavily, the rest of it's not heavily swung, the drums, but the bass line is. And that still works to me. But I thought it was a tech house track, so, you know, I didn't want it full on 90s garage style, right? But I think, uh, yeah, 34 percent. Oh no, this one was, yes, I didn't, I didn't want too much on this because it started to get a bit skippy and I'm not really into the skippy thing. Skippy beats, skippy, skippy. Yeah, I wanted it more on the hi-hats, the drum area, um, and just a little bit here and there on, on other elements, including the bass. So that was the individual sound, but if I even go to the group, I've even put a, a swing on the entire group. So they're all individually, well, certain sounds are individually swinged at, swung at different percentages. And I even also have a group swing where its percentages are intact, but I'm just increasing the amount of overall swing. Great, great. So musical, so simple in uh, implementation, but so effective in a musical sense, right? And that to me is the beauty of this, you know? For some reason, right? This is a crux of the matter here. For some reason, Machine is a groovy sequencer, right? I have no problem at all getting ideas together and making them groove really quickly in uh, Machine versus Ableton Live, uh, Logic. I don't use Logic these days. Pro Tools, Cubase. Cubase is okay, but it's still clunky compared to this, you know? Why is it this software? And not just when it swings, just anything. Uh, moving notes around, just even if it's a, a straight 16 quantize and I'm just moving a few notes around. I'm always happy with the groove I'm getting. But for some reason, this software just grooves very well. Now, the interesting thing about that, which might be interesting, is one of the reasons it could be, I should say. This is just pure speculation that something's going on. But I think because this software doesn't have uh, latency compensation, and the reason machine doesn't have latency compensation is because it's really, it's about using the hardware, the, the, the controller as well, which is very good, by the way. I do have it, I have the machine studio one. Uh, I'm not using it at the moment. But uh, you need to be able to hit the pads. And there, if we had, I can explain it. it. I'll explain it by demonstration. That's what I'll do. I'll go to a latency inducing plugin and you, you'll see, you'll hear why your pad controller would be a waste of time for hitting the pads, right? So I put something on the kick drum there, a big uh, limiter mastering compressor thing. And there you go. Right? So if I had the pad controller here, if I hit that, that plugin would cause everything, it's caused everything to be delayed. I'd hit the pad and be like, Ting, and then the sound comes in a few milliseconds later. Um, so you can't use plugins in machine. Oh, they'll load up, but you can't use them if they if they're not latency zero latency plugins. You can load up a plugin that might have sixty four samples of latency, but you know if you're using machine, you have to find out the ones that because you groove right. That sixty four milliseconds of latency. If you start dotting that plugins around and one's got one hundred twenty eight, I think the swing gets knocked out a little bit. Stands to reason, right? So I do wonder if the latency free, uh, the the zero latency compensation abilities of this software, which is totally intentional and as it should be, uh, has something to do with it because this software grooves. It really does groove. So yeah, I don't believe all swing and, and our, our DAWs sequencers are, are the same. Um, because if they were, I wouldn't have to go to these lengths, start a track off here, load it up as a VST plugin. Machine can load as a VST plugin. 
um, and continue the track once I've got the, the sort of backbone. And I think the feel that I get from this software. is actually really good. So that's all I wanted to say in this uh, video. So not all sequencer groove swing is the same. That's the bottom line. Some groove better than others. I don't know why, but anyway, I thought I would do a video about it. So thanks for watching.